Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over how to use this classic analog tape machine, the TAC-88. The TAC-88 is an analog machine that records eight separate tracks on half inch tape. It uses 10 and a half inch reels, and you can record onto all eight tracks simultaneously or any combination of tracks that you want. In order to use the TAC-88, you need to have tape on the machine. So the TAC-88 uses 10 and a half inch reels. It has these nab adapters on both sides. This is the take up side and this is the supply side. So first of all, we need an empty reel on our take up side. That's if we're using new tape. If we're using tape that's already been recorded on, sometimes it will be stored tails out. In layman's terms, that's where the tape is all fast forwarded onto the take up side and then stored that way. There are a couple reasons for that. One of which is print through where the magnetic signal on one layer of the tape will print through to the other side. And by storing it tails out onto the take up side, any print through is going to come after the initial sound and therefore won't really be heard as much. So if you're recording or using tape that's stored tails out, you would start with that on the take up side and then put your empty reel onto the supply side and then rewind the tape in order to play it. I'm using a fairly new reel of tape, so I'm going to put my empty reel on the take up side. These two little tabs on this reel need to line up so that you can fit the reel over those. And once it's on there, you twist this reel to lock it in place like that. And we have a nice reel of ATR master tape. Load that onto the supply side. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this little head cover here so we can see how the tape is being threaded. So first of all, you've got these two tension arms. There's one on both sides. So on this first one, you wrap the tape around the tension arm and then that goes around this, which is the impedance roller. You've got two tape guides on either side of the head block area. So you're gonna thread the tape across between those two things, but you make sure you're underneath these tape lifters right here. These lifts the tape off of the heads when it's being fast wound. So here underneath the capstan and above the pinch roller. So next we take the tape and put it through the next tension arm over here on the supply side. My reel of tape has a little piece of tape on the end of it, which makes it a little easier. Otherwise you can just wind the tape until you've got a couple of layers on top of it. And then the successive layers of tape will hold the bottom layer in place on the reel. Now just check and make sure the tape is going through all the proper guides and that the tape is on top of these two lifters. Also make sure that you have this bottom head shield down when you're threading the tape. This can get in the way and you might accidentally thread your tape on top of this, which is probably not a very good thing to do. So now that the tape is threaded, I can close this little shield here and I can close that. Let's take a look at all the controls on the front of the TAC-88. Starting over here on the left, we have the all important power switch or power button. And we have a memory button here. What this does is tells the machine to rewind back to zero and stop. So it references this tape counter. This tape counter does not work on my machine, so I won't be able to demonstrate that. This next row of buttons are the function select buttons. These are actually like track arming. So you're going to arm the different tracks on the machine for recording by pressing any of these eight buttons. Let's lift that head shield so we don't have a shadow here so we can look at this output select. Okay, the output select buttons in input mode, the 88 will play whatever is coming into its inputs on the back straight through to the output. This is so you can set levels or you can do a rehearsal take playing through the tape machine. 
you can hear the relays click there when I put this in normal mode. In normal mode, the machine is going to play back off of this middle head, which is also called the sync head. The sync head records and plays back, which helps keep all the tracks in sync so that when you're listening to a track off of the sync head and you're recording on that same track, those two tracks stay in sync. With the output select switch in normal mode, you'll hear playback of whatever is recorded on any of the eight tracks, unless you're recording on that track and that track is armed, then you'll hear the input signal so that you can hear yourself while you're recording. With the output select and monitor mode, you're now playing back off of the repro head over here. This is used for things like calibration and some people consider it a higher quality head that's meant for the final playback of all eight tracks at a time for the final mix. Then of course you have all your basic transport functions. This arrow here pointing to the right is actually play. These two are of course rewind and fast forward. Then you have a big stop button down here and then record and pause. I have no idea why we have a stop and a pause button on this machine and I'm not sure what the difference is, but if anyone knows, feel free to leave a comment below. There's also a cue lever switch kind of thing right here and that actually lowers these tape lifters when you're rewinding or fast forwarding so you can do what's called scrub the tape. You can actually hear what's on the tape during a fast wind mode, although it'll be really fast or possibly backwards. The cue lever on my 88 doesn't work, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. Now when I put the machine in play, you'll see this pinch roller snap against the capstan, and everything should start playing. If you want to hear what's on the tape, check out my last video. Okay, let's see what the difference between stop and pause is. I'm going to pause this. Okay, how's that any different than stop? Okay, let's play it again. And then this time we're gonna stop, see if it seems any different at all. Well, when you're in pause, you can't press stop, but you can go back into play, and then you can press stop. Well, that's kind of the basics of it, and so now let's move on to the connections on the back. You have to connect something to the tape machine, of course, and the connections on the back are pretty simple. There's really only a power cable, a remote connection, and then there are eight inputs and outputs for each of the eight tracks on the TEC88. The inputs, would come normally from the outputs of a mixing console, either bus outputs or maybe direct outputs. And then the outputs of the 88 would go back into either tape inputs or line inputs on a mixing console. Of course, you could also connect the outputs of audio interfaces to the inputs on the tape machine and then connect the outputs of the tape machine to inputs on an audio interface. That's what I did in my last video when I transferred six digital tracks to the 88. That was the outputs of my audio interface connected straight to the inputs of the TAC 88. So make sure to check out that video if you missed it. So that's about it for this quick look at how to operate the classic analog tape machine. I hope you found this video interesting and somewhat informative or educational. If you like this video, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio channel, and I hope everyone out there has an excellent and wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond, whatever it is you're having, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching.